guys today we'll be talking about the differences between plane and spherical trigonometry so spherical trigonometry is used a lot in calculating great circle sailing problems or composite great circle sailing problems and uh, uses the concepts of Napier's rules and cosine rule to solve the spherical trigonometry and uh, the plane trigonometry is what we normally do in the elementary schools so I thought I'll um, uh, make sure that I make this video uh, which explains the difference between plane and spherical trigonometry because plane trigonometry uses plane triangles uh, made of straight lines or the intersection of three lines and spherical trigonometry uses spherical triangles uh, these two triangles are absolutely different from one another so let me start with plane trigonometry and plane triangles first and then I'll move into spherical trigonometry and spherical triangles and then you can see the difference between the two all right so plane triangles like I said before and you can see in the diagram <coughs> sorry uh, uh, they are made of three uh, straight lines there are no curved lines they are not arcs of great circles and the uh, sum of these internal angles a b and c as you can see in the diagram is always equal to 180 degrees all right so the internal angle sum is always equal to 180 degrees so let's take an example so let's take the first example here if angle b was 95 degrees angle C was 47 degrees then angle A which is denoted by theta this symbol here is known as theta all right so that is an unknown value so if I have to find out the value of the internal angle I know that the sum of these three angles is 180 degrees so of course the unknown will be 180 minus the sum of the remaining two which in this case is 38 degrees so angle A becomes 38 degrees all right another example here if angle B was 59 degrees and angle C was 62 degrees then angle A here which is denoted by theta or an unknown would be equal to 180 minus sum of 59 degrees and 62 degrees and that would give me A as 59 degrees right so that's a plane triangle a plane triangle could be isosceles where two sides are equal it could be an equilateral where the three sides are equal and the sides are normally and always given in centimeters or meters it's a unit of a distance they are not given in angles the angles are only the internal angles so let's move on to a right angle triangle so a right angle triangle is also a plane triangle where one of the angles is 90 degrees all right so naturally the sum of the remaining two angles would be 90 degrees because the internally the sum of the three angles is 180 degrees the sides can be denoted here as a b and c now why I have denoted them as a b and c because uh, they are small letters a b and c and their units of distance and with the right angle triangle there is a concept that you have to learn about a hypotenuse uh, opposite and an adjacent side all right so the hypotenuse is a here which is the longest side of a triangle right you can see point 2 here tells you about that one of the internal angles is 90 degree in a right angle triangle and there's a third concept is where the longest side of the square of the longest side which is the hypotenuse or a in this case a square equals the sum of b square plus c square so b and c are the remaining two sides all right so here if b was three centimeters and c was four centimeters what would a be so a square equals b square plus c square so a square would be 3 square plus 4 square which would be 9 plus 16 which would be 25 that would be a square right so a would be equal to under root of 25 which is equal to 5 centimeters so that's how it works in a right angle triangle all right so where the square of the longest side equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides now using these principles of a right angle triangle we also use the concepts of sine theta cos theta and tan theta so h here is the longest side or the hypotenuse it's denoted by h o is the side opposite to the angle in question which in this case is let's say theta so o is the side opposite to theta this is 90 degrees of course and then a is the side adjacent to theta so you can see a here is the side adjacent to theta so you can see here I have denoted the sides here by h o and a 
so the first concept is sine theta what is sine theta so sine of theta and keep looking at this diagram here so you get the concept sine of theta is the opposite side upon the hypotenuse or the longest side which in this case would be 0 upon h so 1 upon sine theta is also known as cosec theta but let's concentrate on sine theta right so if you put the value of sine theta in the calculator so let's take the example of sine 60 degrees just put sine 60 degrees in the calculator you will get a very long answer but you can take the first four or five digits after the decimal and you should be getting something like this 0 0.8660 this also means that a sine inverse of the same value here a sine inverse in the calculator should give you 60 degrees all right so a sine inverse is also one upon sine theta which is also called cosec theta right similarly sine of 30 degrees in the calculator should come out as 0 0.5000 or a sine inverse of 0 0.500 in the calculator should give you a 30 degree value let's take cos theta a cos theta is denoted by adjacent upon hypotenuse so again look at the diagram and see how it is denoted 1 by cos theta is also called as sec theta so if in your calculators you press cos 60 degrees the answer you should be getting is 0 0.500 or if you press sin in or cos inverse of 0 0.500 in your calculators you should be getting 60 degrees similarly if you put cos 30 in your calculators you should be getting 0 0.8660 as the first four or five numbers after the decimal and if you put sin or cos inverse of 0 0.8660 you should be getting 30 degrees in your calculators finally i'll go into tan theta and tan theta is equal to opposite upon adjacent 1 by tan theta is also called cot theta so put calculate in your calculators put tan theta in your calculation as tan 30 degrees for example and the answer you should be getting is 0 0.5774 you will get much longer answers in your calculators but I'm just taking the first four or five numbers after the decimal point similarly if you put tan inverse of 0.5774 you should be getting 30 degrees in your calculator and you get the example right there are some angles known as complementary angles so for example if you have to ever calculate sine 90 minus theta it will always be equal to cos theta for example sine of 90 minus 30 degrees will always be equal to cos of 30 degrees you can try it out in your calculators similarly cos 90 minus theta will be equal to sine theta so for example sine of 90 minus 40 degrees should be equal to or oh sorry rather cos and I'm saying sine a lot so cos 90 minus 40 degrees should be equal to sine of 40 degrees try it out in your calculators and similarly cot 90 minus theta equals tan theta so you get the idea again example cot of 90 minus 60 degrees should be equal to tan of 60 degrees all right so many values in the calculator if you press sine cos and tan will be positive or negative depending on which quadrant they line see all the angles from 000 to 090 degrees the sine, cos and tan values of these angles are all positive. The sine values of 090 to 180, all angles lying between this range here would be positive. But the cos and tan values of these angles would be negative. So anything between 090 and 180, the cos and tan values of these would be negative. Similarly, the tan of all the angles between 180 and 270 would be positive but the sine and cos values of these angles would be negative so for example sine and cos values of 260 uh, 255 uh, 190 would be negative but the tan of all these values such as tan of 187 tan of 245 would be all positive and finally all the values of cos lying between 270 and 360 would be positive but the values of sine and tan of the same values would be negative all right so these are some of the concepts that we use in plane trigonometry
Finally, we come to spherical trigonometry. Now, spherical trigonometry is based on spherical triangles. A spherical triangle is a triangle formed by the intersection of the arcs of three great circles. Great circles are, you know, considered very, um, very long. So they are arcs of the three great circles, and that's what you should say. You should say interse intersection of arc of three great circles. It normally forms a spherical trigonometry and that's why you can see the, the the sides of this triangle here have been denoted as arcs and not as straight lines which was the case with plane triangles all right so the side of a spherical triangle is the angle it subtends at the center of the sphere and may be measured in degrees and minutes now in this case what is different here is that the sides of the spherical triangle such as a small angle a a small angle b and a small angle c are also measured in degrees and minutes not in centimeters or meters it's not a unit of distance i mean it is a unit of distance but it is measured in degrees and minutes because of the um, because they are they are very long uh, in terms of distances all right they are not like plane triangles now what you would have noticed here is that i have written uh, b a and c as capitals uh, and then i've written a b and c is in small letters as well so the big or letters or a b and c the capital ones denote the internal angles of the spherical triangle. However, the small letters A, B and C denote the sides. So you can see A is written opposite to A, B has been written opposite to B and C has been written opposite to C. Now why I have put a cross across C is because if I write a small c, sometimes you can get confused whether it's a small c or a capital C. All right? So even in your calculations, you should try to distinguish the small c from a capital C. So that's why many people use other letters, but mostly in calculations, if you go into the navigation books, you will see A, B's and C's being written. So C, make sure your C is distinct distinguishable from the big C because one denotes a side and the other denotes an angle. So what are the properties of such a spherical triangle? No side or angle of a spherical triangle is greater than 180 degrees. All right. The sum of the three angles A, B, C is always greater than 180 but less than 540. Now you see the difference between plane and spherical. Now plane triangles, the sum of the three angles, internal angles, was always 180. But here it can be anything between 180 to 540. The sum of the three sides A, B, C is always less than 360 degrees. The greater side must have the greater angle opposite to it sum of the any two sides will be greater than the third side and if two sides are equal the opposite angles are also equal so these are properties of a spherical triangle and now you know the difference between a plane triangle and a spherical triangle and plane trigonometry and spherical trigonometry now i have will be also putting videos on how to solve the spherical triangles and what we use is the cosine rule and the napier's rule and my videos will be coming out very soon regarding what are cosine rules and what are Napier's rules and how do we use it. All right. Till then, just uh, go through this video again and make sure you understand the difference between plane triangle and spherical triangles. Plane triangles are used for plane sailing, parallel sailing, uh, distances less than 600 nautical miles, Mercator sailing. But spherical triangle is used in... Um, great circle sailing and composite great circle sailing which involves sailing across the oceans. Alright, so thanks and I'll see you to my next video.